So in this talk, I'm going to try to do one aspect of the construction of rationals. I'm going to assume you are already familiar with the, or you've already seen the video on the rational numbers as equivalence classes on the set Z, the, the, the set of rational numbers, the set of equivalence classes on the set Z cross Z mod Z minus zero. So it's just, I'll denote, instead of writing it as pairs, A comma B, I'll write it as quote fractions. So quote A by B just means uh, it's it's that thing which will ultimately whose equivalence class will just be the usual rational number a over b and i say that two numbers quote a over b and quote c over d are, are related if a d equals b c i'll remind you that 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 it's not totally obvious but it can be shown that this is an equivalence relation okay and then the equivalence classes of that are rational numbers so each rational number is actually an equivalence class of all things of this form which are related to each other. Now I want to define addition of rational numbers. But before doing that, I first define an operation addition of these, these pairs. Okay, which I define like this. Now what do I need to show in order to show that I can actually add rational numbers? Hmm. Okay. Say. Do you mean we want to show closure and addition? We want to show something slightly more subtle. Now we want to show that, that this operation is well defined. It descends to rational numbers. Let me have the picture here. So, uh, what, what do you mean by well defined? Yeah, that's what I'm going to explain. So, so suppose I have the, so this is the equivalence class of A by B. Okay, so here's, here's the element quote A by B. Here's the element quote C by B. And here is the element quote AD plus BC over BD. Now, what's the problem with just saying I just defined this as directly as addition of rational numbers? Well, remember, rational numbers are just equivalence classes. Mm -hmm. Now, the question is, suppose instead of quote A over B, I picked some other element which is in the same equivalence class as quote A over B. Right? So, I picked another element which looks different but is, in, but is equivalent. And again here I pick another element which is in the same equivalence class as COD but is, but has a different look. How do I know that when I add these two elements, cross it, when I add these two elements, these sort of moved elements, which are actually the same as rational numbers. So this is the same rational number as this but looks different. This is the same rational number as this but looks different. How do I know which, whether when I add these, I land up in the equivalence class of this? Did you get, did you get my concern? Yes. Okay. For example, I'll give you another operation which isn't well defined. Okay. Here. Mm. All right, call it. We call it this. This looks pretty cool, right? I just add the numerators and I add the denominators. Yeah. But this is not well defined at the level of rational numbers. You can obviously define it clearly at the level of actual pairs. But, but I could, I could, if I definitely, if I change this A or B to another fraction, which, which is equal to it as a rational number, then, and I do say something here, and then I look at the sum, the new answer may not be equivalent to this answer as a rational number. Do you see that? Yeah. Like, let's say you have half La, plus this thing. 3 over 4 is what? 4 over 6. But now if I change the half to, let's say, 2 over 4, 3 over 4 is 5 over 8. And you can check that these two numbers are not equal as rational numbers, even though the starting pairs are equal as rational numbers. Mm -hmm. So, so this operation is not, is not, doesn't actually descend to rational numbers. So therefore what we actually need to show something to show that this, or this operation actually does descend to the rational numbers. Mm -hmm. So what we want to show, so we are, we'll say, let's say that A or B are and what do I call this? I call this A prime over B prime. 
and so I'm, I'm, I'm shifting each one to something equivalent. What we want to show is that, what do you want to show? So we want to show that AD plus BC over BD is related to what? If you use the prime ones, what will you get? Hmm? Prime yeah, so if instead of adding A over B and C over D, I add A prime over B prime and C prime over D prime, what should I get here? Uh, all the prime, A, A prime, B prime. Hmm? Plus B prime C prime over B prime B prime. I'll make these big, of course, more circular to avoid confusion with the prime. Okay, which is equivalent, which is the same as showing what? Well, I can just work out what R means. It means AD plus BC times B prime D prime mm -hmm. equals BD times a prime d prime plus b prime c prime. This is what I want to show. Okay, how will you show this? Well, we know that a over b are a prime over b prime. So what does that tell us? a b prime equals to b a prime. Let's call this 1. We also know that c b prime equals to Two. Okay, great. Now let's say. Okay, mul so let's say I. So here, now if you if you look at this more carefully, you will see that it's almost like one and two, except it's multiplied by something. So. So what do you need to multiply one by? Well, here you have a d b prime d prime. So it's almost like a d prime, except you multiplied by d d prime. Mm -hmm. So multiply one by. By what? D D prime. D D prime. So what do we get? A B, B prime D D prime equals B A prime D D prime. And what should you multiply two by? B B prime. Good. Have you seen this before? No, I'm seeing the equation. Oh good, 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 good. So we get C D prime B D prime equals B C prime B D prime. Now what do you do? To three and four? Plot them into the Well you can just add them, it's it's easier. Okay. Way. So add three and four. What will you get? You'll actually get exactly what you want. Okay. Right? So you'll get Well the terms are a little like written in slightly different orders, but since multiplication is commutative, you can get the result. Now, this is actually not good enough. We just defined some operation which looks legit, right? It, it, it works. It, it's well defined. What more would you need to actually demonstrate in order to show that this is the right notion of addition? Well, first, you want to check that if your, if your starting elements are actually integers, that is, if you are in the equivalence class of something which was an integer, like if you are in an equivalence class of one of like five over one, that's the equivalence class of five, then addition for integers just means the usual original addition for integers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so what I'm saying? So we already have an addition for integers. So let's imagine. So if you have a over one, if b and d are both one, is this just going to give you a plus c? Hmm? That's something we should have. Yeah, but is it true? Yeah. Okay. So, so additional things to check. Oh, where do we go? More to check. Come down. So, restricts to integers as expected. Right? Otherwise, it, otherwise, like, it conflicts with our original notion of addition, which is that. Okay, what else do we need to check? Well, we want to check that it satisfies the usual conditions we associate with addition. So, that means it should be usual. commutative, associative. associative, and it should have zero as identity, additive identity. 
you have to have ID word? Yes, that's also true in this case. Um, so zero as additive identity. Additive inverses. Are we down here? Mm -hmm. Now there's, there's a little more you want to check about how it how it's compatible with with multiplication. But since we haven't yet defined multiplication, it's hard to do. But once you define multiplication, you'd also want to check that the addition and multiplication are compatible. Distributive. The distributivity condition uh, is the main compatibility thing you want to check. Okay. So 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 the key thing is we want to check. When we are extending an operation, what what's the philosophical aspect? Of, so the so first thing is when you are extending an operation, that the that that it restricts to the in the to the original thing just the as the way the old operation was, right? The second thing you want to check in general is that <coughs> as I said, this is zero over one being zero. Zero is just zero over one. So the second thing you want to check is that the various sort of attributes which you had, the various properties which you had, like commutativity, associativity, etc. By and large, you want them to be preserved. Now, some of them you may actually lose out on, but in general, you want them to be preserved, which are ones you consider fundamental to the meaning of the operation, right? So after you check it's well defined, you should check these two things, and then that means you likely have the right candidate. Now, in some cases, it turns out you still have multiple definitions and you need to work out. But actually, you can show something more remarkable. If you assume these two things, so if you take an operation that's well defined and it restricts to the integers as expected and it satisfies these conditions. Okay. And it also satisfies some compatibility with multiplication. Then that addition is essentially unique. It has to be this addition. So it's actually like that we don't really have much choice once we put out the conditions clearly. That's a little beyond what, beyond the scope of this video. Stop here.